reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, I rejoice in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister, in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is in Christ, in you, the hope for glory. For it is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may be present, everyone perfect in Christ. For this I labor and struggle in accordance with the exercise of his power working within me. For I want you to know how great a struggle I am having for you and for those in Lacedonia and all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged as they are brought together in love to have all the riches of assured understanding for the knowledge of the mystery of God, Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, In God is my safety and my glory. In God is my safety and my glory. Only in God be at rest my soul, for from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed. In God is my safety and my glory. Trust in him at all times, O my people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. In God is my safety and my glory. Good morning, everyone. Monday, September 6th, the beginning of a new week, and Luke speaks to us. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions. He said to the man with the withered hand, come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around at them, he then said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The gospel of the Lord praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus is getting himself into trouble again. Uh, he is determined to reveal the kingdom of God and what is possible, and nothing and no one can get in the way. We have to keep the word revelation in mind. That's what Jesus is doing. Yes, he's healing, curing this man with the withered hand, but he's revealing the power of God to save. To save. The curing of the man with the withered hand is, is just one part, one small piece of, of what Jesus Christ is really all about. Jesus the Christ, Emmanuel, the Savior of the world. And he's doing these things to let people know that the power of God is limitless. Limitless. Jesus couldn't heal and cure all the sick people in the world. If that were the reason why, we were, why he were here, he could have done it. But what, what would that have proven? that he was some kind of a, a, a miracle working magician. He always put his miraculous moments in the context of his true mission, which was to proclaim the kingdom of God in a great many ways, as much through parables and teachings and proclamations as it was through this. And all of that is designed to reveal to others the kingdom of God on earth. 
And of course, he frames it in much higher-minded language when he speaks to them at the beginning. Is it lawful to save life? Jesus does it in the ultimate context. And don't forget with Lazarus and the little girl who died, and you know, Jesus is perfectly capable of, of restoring life itself. And so that's how he frames his proposition uh, to them. Ultimately, I can even do that. Is, that. is that lawful or unlawful? Of course, there's no answer for that because everybody, when they're really, really ill, would like to be restored, and the people in front of him knew that. So Jesus has great power in, in these revealing stories to, to put people back together again, but it still happens. It still goes on. Jesus has the power to restore, and we're the ones who merit the restoration. We're the ones now who are restored. We receive Jesus in the Eucharist when we stretch out our hands. We listen to, as he said last Sunday in the scripture, and we understand the revelation of scripture. And all of that is restorative to our hearts, our minds, and our souls. So what went on back then is going on now. We all are subject to the, the issues that happen health-wise as we grow older, certainly, and, and we're not necessarily going to be restored every single time we have a headache or we cut ourselves or we wind up with some kind of illness. That's in all likelihood not going to happen. But we get through all the difficulties of life a whole lot easier when we recognize the restorative power of Christ to the heart, the mind, and the soul, to meet those challenges, whether they're health care or personal, whatever they are, to meet them head on with the power that comes through faith in Christ alone. Take care, my friends. See you tomorrow. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer.
and reflection.